This presentation is brought to you by BenLowry.com. Hello, Ben. Hello, Arthur. How are you doing? Very well, mate. And yourself? Yeah, good. Okay, well, thanks for taking the time to let us interview you today. How have you been recently? I've been very busy on the net, uh, making videos, and uh, we, the family got four young daughters. We, we kept very busy around the house, and, and um, the last two and a half, three months, uh, including four weeks of rain, we've built a whole um, recycled garden oh, right. the back, around the sides of the house. We put a video up about, about that as well, so you can find it on the YouTube channel. Yeah, great. Well, before we get stuck into uh, some of the details, why don't you just give us a little bit of an introduction about your website and how all this began for you, if you would. I've all, well, we've always had an interest um, about the world and you know what's going on and who we are and what is our role and, and place in it. Uh, in 2005, um, the family experienced uh, tax fraud and bank fraud, which is what got us into the law. Um, and that led to the, the theft of the family home. And what we what blew us away the most was there was no community immunity. Everybody kept telling us, should be right, mate, no worries, mate, it'll all be sorted out. Mm. And uh, that was on the basis that we had an unlosable, incontrovertible case. When we started uh, researching other cases of similar to ours, we found uh, all, heaps and heaps of unlosable cases all losing. Mm. And we realized that we're going to lose this one as well unless we did something uh, drastic. So we dropped the lawyers, dropped everybody, we went outside the square. And what we did, in, the, in hindsight, you know, looking back a few years later, we stopped diving into their books, into their law books, stopped diving into their world to tell us how to think and feel about anything. Hmm. And uh, we, we went with logic, we scrutinized all kinds of information, no matter what information we were reading, we scrutinized it and looked for the logic and looked for how it applied in, in the real world and what we what, what was starting to construct, what we thought was the real world. and uh, and ha because we realized people were so asleep and we wanted to work out why and how people were asleep. Mm -hmm. How could people around us who knew us well, including family, friends, could let us be a lamb to the slaughter? We were left alone to have all this uh, work, work that we did for 20 years building up this equity um, in the system to have it all be stolen like that mm -hmm. and force the family close to destitution and poverty which is where we've been and still close to ever since. So um, when we realized um, that there was something terribly wrong, we started emailing, because uh, back then there, were very, there was very little information on the internet about this sort of stuff. There wasn't much around. Most of what was communicating then was through email database groups, uh, uh, where all the real pioneers of the freedom fighters um, of the free man sovereignty movements um, were, were talking. And we joined in on some of those, particularly the common law ones that were back then. And through that, um, in emailing about our situation and calling out for help, the odd man or woman would turn up in our lives, either at our front door or we'd meet them or through email correspondence. And they would give us jewels, bits of information they had. And uh, again, we would cipher through what we thought was right and we'd throw everything else away. Mm. One particular man came to our life uh, revealed to us about his 30 years of layman research uh, that he put in all his spare time, uh, reading old books written by archbishops and um, old thesaurus and old English dictionaries and old Black's Law dictionaries and stuff. And what he said, he told us that he uncovered the codes of the English language and that, um, and that what was really going on was another thing again about the language. So he revealed to us some information and he helped us create some documents that um, we filed in the Supreme Court that had the judges flee the courtroom in 2006. Now this didn't help us win the case, so it didn't help us uh, get the family home back and we still have not resolved any of those things. But it helped us uh, begin to think about the brainwashing tactics that were being used and who were these people behind it that uh, were uh, using it. And, and, you know, so. The website uh, started in December 2006 as a continuation of reaching out to people to help people wake up to what we were uncovering. Now, back then, there was not much prominent information about fluoride or chemtrails or uh, vaccinations. I mean, there were people out there. There were pockets of really good stuff. But generally, there wasn't anything collective where someone could go to a website and get anything they want to know in one area and also something that may be able to break through into mainstream. 
Now, this website, through the work we did, a combination of the webmaster that we had and the, and the methods we used to, to use uh, the database, which is Drupal 5, we were able to um, develop a sufficient traffic that broke into mainstream. This, um, as, as, as the work kept unfolding, we kept writing articles, uh, and I stressed the point as well. We didn't have all the answers uh, back then because we were still working everything out. We kept, we kept making mistakes. We were right about it. And what I found, uh, particularly me, what I found doing, I started debating. I started arguing, and, 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 and literally not physically fighting, but arguing with just about everybody because I kept seeing chaos everywhere I went. And there was nothing to stop it, this, this, this monster running out of control that was consuming families left, right and centre. We were getting letters and letters coming from mothers and fathers who were victims of pedophile gangs and sex rings. We were getting letters from people who were devastated by tax fraud and bank fraud. We were getting letters written by people who said they'd been poisoned and, uh, and, 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 and they found evidence where uh, people have come into their homes and they laced their salt and their pepper and their spices uh, with things. And, you know, and, and, and on it goes. And when we kept getting the same information from multiple sources, all unrelated to each other, with similar themes, we started to realize what the real shadow world was all about. So I guess, um, without going too further into this, the website is a combination of our effort to try to help people learn about what is really going on while we keep scrutinizing and keep working out what we feel is going on and compile it all into one research library. So I, I wouldn't say the website is a fantastic website in terms of easy to browse around. I'm not a web uh, genius. I, I'm just a, uh, I'm a nothing really when it comes to this sort of stuff. I learned basic HTML stuff. And what I did, I just put 16 hours in, in seven days a week. I pulled out of the system in 2006. I withdrew driver's license, registration. I just withdrew everything. I didn't realize what that meant, the significance of that as this unfolded from 2006 to recent times. But in hindsight, I can see why. The, the death threats, why we, you know, we, our family received 12 death threats and why they tried to kill me three times over the last couple of years. Really? The last time with my youngest daughter. Yeah. My gosh. And um, there's, yeah, well, it's nothing unusual. I think anybody that starts going into the rural, the rural areas, yeah, look, our perspective, Ben, is that pretty much we're surrounded by intelligence agents. Everywhere we turn, there, it's, there are many of them. We call them, we will lead every revolution against us. These are people who get you to think what they want you to think, get you to put your life energy into those thoughts so you create that world. They, um, we have the gift of life to, to set in motion the thoughts we are thinking. And uh, by getting us to put in motion the images they give us, because images are thoughts, we can create that world, which is their world. So we get infiltrated on a variety of fronts by these people because they've got to control the way we're thinking. Um, but not only that, these intelligence agents network, they come into your life as your friend. They get to know who you're talking to. They get to know uh, what you're thinking, what your dreams are. Some of these people are, appear to be uh, good people because they've been hammered by the system. But we've uncovered the tactics of this, of the, of, of the Supremasonic world and how they do it to try and uh, get you under your guard so they can actually influence your thinking and influence your particular approach to life, influence the kind of remedy that you want, uh, which only benefits them because their, their world, their power is the system and they don't want to lose grip of the system. And if that one wears thin, they give you another one. So um, that's what it's all about in terms of the New World Order. So, I mean, I, I, I know I could go on and on and on about all this stuff, but we've had that many intelligence agents come into this home. We greet them as friends. We don't see them as an enemy. We don't have, we don't, we're not frightened of who they are. We do everything out in the open. We keep no secrets. We've got nothing to hide. All these people were babies like everyone. None of them were given full disclosure, idiot-friendly full disclosure of what would become of their lives by the brainwashing they would endure to become the roles that they play today in the system. And that goes right up into all the hierarchies. It doesn't matter whether you're king, queen, pope. They were all babies as well. They've all been got at. There are no winners in this. Everybody's lost. Oh my gosh, my gosh. I don't even know where to begin, what to ask you first. I mean, there's so many things I want to ask you. You mentioned uh, something to do with language and the, manipul the manipulation yes. of language. Was that, uh, by any chance, a reference to the, the quantum stuff, the David Wynn Miller type of thing? No, no David Miller is a scam. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to say it straight out. Just about everybody out there in the front line getting huge exposure and getting a lot of uh, push in this, are misleading people. 
Right. And we, we we confronted David Wynn Miller about four or five years ago, and he ran off. He wouldn't debate. He was unwilling to scrutinise. When people don't scrutinise information, they don't want to put it to the test, and you have to start questioning. When you start looking at how the information and how they mislead people, because uh, look, the the Freemasonic world has a vast range of whitewashing, white anting tactics, and there's many of them that we can discuss. But you know, that's maybe not appropriate for today to talk about now. But there, there's a m multiple fronts because they basically got to get you not to think in the way they want you to think, but get you to think in the way they they do want you to think. And they got to get you thinking in ways that you think that that's where there might be a remedy. Um, but they build your hopes up and they smash it in your face. You know, I mean, for instance, the One Nation Party we had here, which was led by Pauline Hanson back in the 1990s, that was uh, run by a bunch of Freemasonic shepherds that cast a net to cap capture all the rednecks in Queensland who already were disenfranchised on a variety of fronts because they already had two seasons of, of experiencing vast interest rates and devastation to farming families and and, 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 the, and the devastation of that uh, where we lost across Australia over... Well, now we've lost over half a million farming families in Australia, but during the, the, the 80s and 90s, we lost about um, uh, close to 300,000 farming families. And there was a vast majority of growing groups that were... Forming uh, gun parties, you know, patriot parties, and that kind of stuff. So they bring in Pauline Hanson to start up um, um, a mantra to attract a lot of these people into a party and build up the hope of that party, and then have the party to self destruct from within to give the mantra that, you, that nothing works, that there's no future, we can't work together, we can't actually do things together. Mm. And there's enough evidence to show how that was, um, how they created it how they sabotaged it from within and how they derailed it, you know. And you'll see this everywhere we turn in, in the system. These mm. tactics, they're brilliant, these people. Absolutely brilliant. Arthur, let me ask you um, a typical type of free man type of question because a, a lot of our audience are interested in those type of things. So you mentioned driving and, you know, without plates and things like that. What's been your experience of driving and driver's licenses and cops and things like that? Well... The way to look at this is the lands that we're on were invaded by these people. I mean, the Norman conquest of Britain, the land that you're on, they caused mass genocide to the people on those lands. The, the, the traditional British people aren't the, the Anglo-Saxons. The, the original man on the land, those tribes, uh, there would be hardly any left, if any. Um, the force behind that are the same force that planned to conquer all the known new lands across Earth, which weren't new lands. This force that invaded the land that I'm on, we now call Australia or the private corporation or the Commonwealth of Australia, this land is controlled by the same force. Uh, as, the, as, on the, as on the surface, the British Empire retreated, as they tell you in their stories, they left behind a shadow world. So instead of having a military dictatorship they had to control us through um, over by, by means where you know, everyone with their guns on the street and we're all sort of under the standing of this force, they did it through covert means, through brainwashing, and, and get us ruled by the brain. Now, the, the law, the system of law is their law, and the law is to keep us under their standing, to keep us under their control of their force. Anybody who wakes up from the prescripted medication that keeps everyone dumbed down and stupid because they're all sedatives, anyone who sticks up the head above the fog of this nonsense, they start to see this force. And what we're looking at are the, what we're looking at are the descendants of these ancestors. Now, what we discovered in the Freeman Path, we took the plates off the cars. Now, if you go to the homepage of the loveforlife.com.au website, you'll find in the point 1 to point 13, one of those points, I can't remember which one it is, whether it's point 9 or 10 or 11, uh, in the main guard of it, as you scroll down from the top, a link there to a Fiona Christian versus Date Debt Recovery Office. And there's, I think there's part, 10 parts to it. It's very, very big, convoluted. Um, and it takes a long time to go through it. But if you just scan through the basic part of it, and maybe what we should do is put another post up of just the basic, basic core of it and keep it all simplified into one post. But what you'll find there, we did all the administrative processes, everything you could possibly uh, find that's available within the free man sovereignty movement, within the, using their statute laws. We did everything in honour. We did everything above board. Um, we even... Um, gave them promissory notes, brilliant promissory notes that people still say today that they're, you know, they're excellent, well-crafted promissory notes, helped by others who helped us with them. Um, 
no matter what we tried, but because, because of the website and getting the information out, they sent in two swarms of, of force on us. They, the first time, somewhere between 12 and 16 police, detectives, sheriffs, and tow trucks uh, to take the family car because of what we've done. Now, um, there's two fronts to this. One front was we refused to pay a fine for $25 for not um, um, voting, and we also refused to pay a fine that they, they issued for uh, the re re relocation of a dog uh, to give them notification of a new address of the dog. Now, we did this intentionally, and we wanted to use our lives as guinea pigs to see exactly how far the force will come out into the open to admit that we're under the standing of this force mm. and that we don't really truly have uh, the true, in the true essence of democracy or, you know, freedom in that, in that way. Mm. So here they, they, they in, in doing this and posting all the documents out and, and networking and doing all that across the internet, their force arrived here. They tried to take the car the first time. Uh, you'll see all the photos, you'll see all this, what they did. They gave up and after, after about an hour and a half of bluff and everything else, they disappeared. And then uh, some months later, they came back a second time. This time they pinned me down and, uh, and uh, kept us aside and they, they stole the car. Now, you'll see the events of all this, how they did it. You'll see that uh, they also kidnapped Fiona. They took her out of the family car with her youngest daughter in the back seat, who was only two years old. And one of the police officers actually harmed Fiona uh, in the car. And, uh, and took her to the police, the local police station. And she was uh, journeying uh, with no plates, no VIN numbers, no nothing, no state property, uh, zilch. Um, but they, they sent a force in on her. Um, within, when they pulled her over, she rang me pretty quickly because they, they had to let her ring me. And they had another bunch of police cars waiting for me around the corner, sitting, waiting for me, so I was going to get in the car and come around. Because this all happened around the corner from home where we live here. And I got the sense not to get in the car, so I actually walked uh, on the street and across the back through these sort of pond areas where we live, near, there's got some ponds nearby. I just knew this, and as I walked across the pond, I could see a police car sitting down the road waiting behind this little back lane. As I walked through, I could see another police car waiting up there. And as I walked up, because I had the camera, I kept taking photos, I could see a swarm of police around Fiona in the car. And, you know, as if we're Ned Kelly and we're, we're gangsters, you know, and we carry guns and weapons and we're violent and... You know all this stuff, and they they actually threw more than half a million dollars at us, uh, at uh, of their money, taxpayers' money, over a twenty-five dollar fine, and over a, uh, and over a thirty or forty dollar fine for not voting, whatever it was, and over the fact that we were journeying across the land uh, as a free man back then. That's because that's how we were thinking back then, and they were telling us that we're not free men. Now we did all the paperwork in the courts and all that, and I tried to coach Fiona into how to handle these people in the court, but she sort of. Because she's, you know, and she was a lactating mother, still breastfeeding, and you know, you know, you can't expect everybody to have the brains to deal with all this knowledge and have to handle it, you know. So they tricked her in the court because she went in there and told them that she was, um, that she admitted to guilt, and that she was going to challenge them to to bring proof to the fact of, of that um, their claim. But she didn't know how to handle it because the the, the, the the judge started just reading out the, um, the 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 fine, the charge, and she didn't actually interrupt him. So she caught, she got hammered with a fifteen hundred dollar fine, and she's still paying that fifteen dollars a month ever since um, in doing that. In the meantime, I I actually withdrew completely out of out of the system. I don't have any contracts with the state anymore, zilch, none at all in any area. I just don't have them. I don't use them. I don't rent them. I live off the gifts of other people who provide gifts uh, through Fiona and the supporters and that to allow me to do the work that I do. So that I can turn around, get stronger to help reach out and help other people to start doing this as a team member, we can actually start collectively pulling out. Mm. In a nutshell, Ben, there is no freedom in that way. In the in, in the system, there is no such thing as freedom. It's all about contract because we are renters of their intellectual property. If you file any paperwork in their world, you're admitting that you are their renter, you are their slave. If you argue in their court for any, using any of their laws or stuff, you're admitting you're in their world. You're under their standing straight away. Hmm. Yeah. You got to ignore it all. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. Um, something that people kind of always want to hear is: is there anybody down there kind of winning lawsuits? Is there any particular methods, or or is it like you just said to me a moment ago? You know that you just can't win, kind of thing. Like... Well, we're up against just us. There's no justice. Um. So um. 
the the ones look the 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 game is the system. They need us to stay in the system where we give our life force energy to it, where we expend all our energy in the system because that's where we give them their power. Instead of us being a man on the land, where we because on land we're free because if we take responsibility for being man on the land, and li- and, and live under full liability, full responsibility, then uh, there's no master. We're not answerable to anybody. Mm. We're only answerable to the harm that we cause to others if we choose to pursue any avenue like that. But in the system, we're all under limited liability because we're now renters of their intellectual property. We're now fallen into a false world or a fairy tale. So anything in the system that allows us... Now, they, they will allow certain precedents to occur that give the impression that there is some kind of victory. But all those people caught up in it, including the mantra, keeps telling everybody to stay in the system, that your life is in the system, that you maintain contract with uh, the, the copyright holders of the system. So in terms of winning, I don't see any winning when it comes to actually ca- causing a mass withdrawal from the system, which is all about harm. So in terms of staying in the system, there are some little victories here and there, but I don't see them as victories at all. I just see them as the mantras of the continuation of our slave status to the system. Mm, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. It's like it's like a victory within the slavery system, isn't it? Exactly. It's like a victory for a slave kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. they give you the false promise, the false hope that you think there's some remedy there. Yeah. Now, or did we just put a video up? Well, I put a video up a couple of days ago. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, but it, t- it talks about that the name, um, you know, is the beast, you know, and, 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 um, and that how we uh, use the name. Because when our parents registered the birth certificate, they gave us a name. Hmm. And we represent that name. And that name that is used on any piece of paper anywhere it, uh, is, is, the, uh, is the mark of the beast, is the, um, the acknowledgement to them that we are their slave. We are the representative of that intellectual property that is the name, mm-hmm. for which we gave them permission to administrate. Now, I stress the point uh, in the work we've done. They don't claim ownership of anything. They don't claim ownership over the land. They don't claim ownership over anyone or anything. Who, who the don't? The trickery of poll- the, the, the people behind the system, okay. the Freemasonic world that filters down through the law and the government mm-hmm. and all the areas, all the areas of life that, um, where this power is based. Okay. They don't claim it. They trick us into claiming it. They trick us into giving them authority to administrate the intellectual property that we're renting. And that's where they get their power. I don't quite understand. Would you elaborate a little bit what you mean? Well, the night, see, um, Every every lie, every lie is a curse. Mm. Every lie comes back to the maker. To deflect the curse, to deflect the lie, they had to come up with a method, a system, to get their victims to process the lie, process the curse. Now, long ago, they used to use animals. They used to put the curse into the pigs and send the clips to jump off the cliff uh, to see if they could dissolve the curse because they don't want the curse to come back on the makers, in this case, the priests who were behind this. The, um, then they, they, this, as, this, as this thing unfolded, as these systems unfolded um, across the generations, because it's all documented in their books. They, they, they tell you the truth in their own books, what they did. Um, they started doing ritual sacrifices um, to try to deflect the curses of their making uh, and burn them off through ritual sacrifices, virgin birth sacrifice, and all this kind of stuff. Kind of stuff. And then into child sacrifice and all those things that they that they did. And this is all documented the stuff. They talk you can you can read it in the Talmud. You can see it's in the Bible. You can read it in many many of their things. Uh, they, they admit it. There's no argument about this stuff it didn't happen. That this stuff did occur. Then they found another way of dealing with it because they found that the curse kept coming back. Um, and that's you know it's another subject to get into. But they created money or current the current of the curse the currency to deflect the curse by getting the um, the victims to take on the current of the curse through money. Because the whole system of money is about processing the lie, processing the curse. The the base lie being that um, some men have more higher standing than other men, that not all men are equal. And whatever system is used to uphold that base lie is a curse. And they try to suck us all in to accepting that lie, to accepting the curse. So we get tricked, Ben. We get, we get tricked into, in this case, 
our parents gave us a name. Now, in the real world, that was a sound that came out of nature and identified who is the living man that we are in the real world. That is earth, that is life, that, that, is, that is man. But in this dead world that was crafted by these people, I should stress the point, when all these lands were invaded, the people behind who were priests, they were high priests, these were Freemasonic priests, and these same high priests with all their regalia they wear, are the same priests that uh, oh. that you see as the Roman, the priests behind the Jesuits, the Roman Catholic Church, the Church of England, etc. They, they filter into all the religions because they created all the religions. Uh, I must stress the point that up to 1780 AD, roughly 1780 AD, 99.99% of the total population of man could not read and write anything, any alphabet language, and never did. Today's supposed 6.7 billion population all their ancestors came back through all recorded his story had nothing to do with it because they couldn't read and write any alphabet language. Even up to 1930, still more than 90% were illiterate. They couldn't read and write. The only ones who couldn't read and write were the owners of the castles, the high priesthoods, the landlords, the barons, the aristocrats, um, the royal families, and all their scribes and lackeys. They represented roughly 20 per 1 million. They're the ones who recorded all history. All libraries are their libraries. No one else could do it. Now, all the documentation of history that brings us into the world that we're living in today, which they taught us through their schools, because when all the lands were invaded, they decimated all the tribes of man. I'm going to bring. I'm going to go back to this cursed stuff. I'm not getting away from it. I'm going to come back to it. But just to give you some quick nutshell on this, they decimated all the tribes of man, left what remained, mainly children and those, and they brainwashed them into the version of of of, of their world uh, in the in the read and write alphabet languages. We've got to remember that they sent their reconnaissance in, you know, missionaries, botanists, scientists, etc. It could have been up to a couple hundred years amongst all the tribes across Earth, most of them. Documented their, their tongue, documented their way of life, documented all kinds of stuff. When they got sufficient evidence and they did the reconnaissance, they then, sent, they then sent their warships in to decimate the tribes. Killed off everybody they had to kill off and then introduced their version of history through the written right alphabet languages and brainwashed those children. So they would, through gradualism, because then they, they teach their children to lose their tongue and, rem and not remember the true history. Mm. Now, there's another subject in this about who we really are as man and the true language of man and all this sort of stuff. But the, all the read and write alphabet languages are theirs. All read and write alphabet languages are satanic. They're all abominations. All of them came out of mathematics and geometry, and all three of them are satanic. Now, that's another, another subject, again, to get into. Mm. But this is factual. It's unarguable. It's, it's, it's totally incontrovertible. Now, in terms of going back to the curse and the lie, we've been force-fed a version of reality through their history. And the brainwashing, because uh, we're all put on the conveyor belt through factory planet Earth, where we entered. You see, all, all, the chest, all the treasure chests they brought off the ships onto these lands were brought on, on the lands by these priests. And all these priests carved up all the lands, particularly here on what we now call Australia, into parish lands. They're all divided up into parish lands. Now, you may find, if you look into your land titles deeds, even on your land, you'll find the same thing. You may not call it parish lands, but you'll find the same intention. And on every parish, there's a church. And in every church, there's the priest who deals with the sinners. And all the sinners are those who are processing the curse of this lie to deflect the curse away from them. So they will take it on, and they do it through the current. So when you take on a mortgage, you actually take on a death certificate to process the curse on the land. Now, in the video that we put up, we go into all this and we explain this. So if you wish to direct people to that video that we just put up a couple of days ago, uh, you're most welcome to do so. And uh, I won't sort of take up too much time on that subject now in, in this chat with you. But because I want to just point out briefly that the system is all about processing a lie, processing a curse. The lie is all about harm, harm to who we really are, harm to remembering who we really are, harm to what we're really part of, and harm to all our brothers and sisters of life that we're all connected with, because we're all each other's consciousness. We're all of the pool of man's consciousness. And the whole dream of life is who we really are. Earth is who we are. And they pitched us, they pitched us so many lies in so many ways and sucked us in because we're the ones who bought the lie. We were tempted by these lies. Now, I can explain to you, if you wish, Ben, I can get into this thing about belief and ownership because this is the heart of the free man movement. And it gets into the heart of all their tactics and how they suck us in to abuse us and use us and keep us in a fallen state. Go ahead. Deceive us, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. For example, okay, well, for example, uh, Little Mary gets introduced to the story of Alice in Wonderland. Now, Little Mary is sensory because you can touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see Little Mary. Uh, Little Mary is real. She exists. She has substance. She's not invisible. She's not a fantasy or illusion. But Little Mary, through a fairy tale, sitting on Mum's lap, gets read a story about Alice in Wonderland that is not real, that is nonsense, because Alice in Wonderland, you can't touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see. They don't exist. They're made up. The only one present in the real world is Little Mary. To represent, represent the presence of Alice in Wonderland, it needs the presence of Mary to give presence to Alice in Wonderland. Do you comprehend that? No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. Well, little the story of Alice in Wonderland don't exist. The characters that are Alice and the and the and the Wonderland world don't exist. They're made up. Right. To give them the sense of presence as if it does exist, it needs someone who does exist, who has sense, that it, that has presence, to give their life to that information, to give life to those thoughts, to give life to that information, to that story. Yeah. So that she can then play in character that fairy tale. So, for instance, you can come to the home of Little Mary and she's turned the family home into Wonderland. She's taken the dining tables and chairs and turned them into the props. She's taken all the toys out of the bedroom and turn them into the characters, the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And there she is, in play, in character, giving presence to that story. Okay. What? And Mary's a real person, right? Well, little Mary's you. I can come and visit you, and I can touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see you. You have sense. Okay, right. You're real. Yeah. I have sense, right? Hmm. But the fairy tale has nonsense. You can't touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see. Hmm. Mary has to use the real world to create the characters and the props to construct the, the, the fairy tale that she's now performing in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we got sucked into a fairy tale called the system. Hmm. And we had to use nature to construct the dead world. So everything that makes up the system is the remains of nature. Destroyed mountains, rivers, valleys, water, etc. To construct the dead world. And we've entered into it to represent the characters to perform in the fairy tale that is the system. Yeah. And that is what has happened to us. Now, when your parents registered a birth certificate or live birth to the system, they agreed to create a fiction. They gave permission to the state to create a fiction of your name so that you will be taught to represent that name that you will perform in the fairy tale that is the system hmm. and that that intellectual property that was made up is now administered by the copyright holder of that fairy tale that is the system in law terms the holder in due course of that fairy tale is the crown because they are the author authorized author i rise representatives represent of that fairy tale that is the system they administer at a minister to the fairy tale hmm. They administrate. So the, the name, is, uh, would I, the name is like a character, and I'm like the actor that's animating it. Yes, is that it? Yes, and you're on the stage of the system. Got and it. This is the true Matrix, not the one they sold you in the movie. This is the real one. Hmm. So they have authority only in the system because it is their world. You are not of their world or in their world, but they tempted you to fall into their world and to be of their world. So you can be ruled by their laws. Hmm. So they gave you a language to represent. They gave you a world, a whole history, so that you could fall into it. And everything that you... The English language is theirs. Now, in, the, in their books, in the 1200s, French, Judeo-Judaic legals, these are the true Zionists. Judeo-Judaism is, is the basis of true Zionism. Right? It's nothing to do with the Israeli Jews. The true Zionists are Aryan bloodlines. The Norman conquest of Britain uh, were Aryans. The Mountbatten family is an example of the Aryan bloodlines. Most of them are very tall. The current uh, Batten families that are uh, within the House of Windsor are Aryan bloodlines. You'll find that these Aryan bloodlines are the masters of black magic or uh, sorcery. They are, they're all brilliant in remote control, remote projection, and remote viewing. They're brilliant at putting thoughts in your brain and getting you to give life to those thoughts so you'll, you'll set those thoughts into motion. 
no different to little Mary being sucked into putting into motion the fairy tale by being seduced into representing it through repetition by giving drawings and pictures and a wonder a wonder world for her to go and, and be entranced into it, becoming a little dressed up as, as Alice through the looking glass into Wonderland. Mm. Right, so we've done the same thing with the system through the name. And, 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 and I'm only, again, scratching the surface here, mate, about how they've done this. But the English language, they called it the New World Language back then. It was created by Gideon you know, de Lipos. And it took to roughly the 1500s to conclude the creation of this English language, the New World Language. And it appears that the first one who used the letter J, because the letter J didn't even exist until they brought it out, was uh, William Shakespeare, alias Francis Bacon. And um, by the word Jew and the word Jesus. Now, we know clearly that Jesus came out of oh. Isis, which came out of Lysis, which came out of Isis. Because, you see, every letter of the English language is a code, it's a symbol, which is no different to Egyptian hieroglyphics, because all hieroglyphics are symbols, same as the English language. And the New World... The new world, which is the new world order, which is England, in England, English language, which is the world we've fallen into, into the system, is Egypt. We're still in Egypt now. We've never left it. You see, as one lie wears thin, they create a new lie. They, they have to keep adapting the lie to keep us dumbed down and stupid. So we get sucked into one lie and we fall out of that enclosure and we, they give us another enclosure to suck us into. And we can talk about that, you know, concentrate on one subject. So mm. I guess what I'm doing, I'm just skirmishing a lot, mate, just to give you some sense of pieces here and there just to give an idea and to your listeners a bit of what's happened to, to us and, and how deep this problem goes. Well, it's very interesting. But, a, a lot of our listeners are um, fascinated by this type of thing, so it's great. Yeah, keep going. Well, the English language is the instrument that they used to... Con see, that you need a conveyor belt to mould the constructs. You see, like every construct is made up, like Alice in Wonderland is a construct. It's an idea, it's intellectual property. For example, the idea of the Supreme Court doesn't exist because it's, it's nonsense. It, it, it has no sense. The Supreme Court is just intellectual property. Um, think of intellectual property like a bubble. M imagine a dream as a bubble, and all the information that makes up that dream is intellectual property. That is the dead world. Imagine multi layers of bubbles all joining each other that makes up the dead world that is the system, and it's all recorded in their history books and their law books and all that. Right? Mm. So that the whole system is a bubble, and within the bubble, there are multi-bubbles, each one of them embodying intellectual property. Mm. And they have to teach us that intellectual property so we can represent it, because it's nowhere to be recorded in the real world. You see, in the real world, in nature, you can go to a life form and observe it, and download the information that life form has to offer you. Right? We can process the information. We don't have to memorize any life form in nature, whether it's inanimate or not, because every life form may, takes responsibility to maintain the presence of its purpose in this dream of life. That's why the horse meets another horse and they create a foal, and the information of, and the purpose of the horse in nature continues. All cells regenerate, which regenerate and regenerate, because everything in the real world has a purpose which keeps the dream of life in focus, in, in sensory reality. So we can touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see it. So we can breathe it, touch it, and smell it, and live as man, and, and be able to live in the real world, in the real dream of life. Now, there's a series of videos called The Dream of Life, which I'm doing the best I can to create, and we're up to part 5B at the moment. And we go, all to, we go into all this. We've got part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4, part 5A, part 5B, 5C and 5D will come out very shortly. And this is our attempt, as amateurs, to explain all this in great detail. So and hence, and not crowded all up here in this discussion today on this, on this phone call, mate, you can go and watch the Dream of Life videos and you can get up to speed on all this. And, and, and I'm sure that many of your listeners will be blown away at the extent of the deception and how clever they've done this. Mm. Um, for example, to going back to intellectual property, because you know, Alice in Wonderland is intellectual property. The system is intellectual property. Free man is intellectual property. Your name is intellectual property. The statutes are intellectual property. Um, the English language is intellectual property. 
Mathematics is intellectual property. Number one, number two, number three, intellectual property. The compass and square, intellectual property. ABC, intellectual property. None of this information you'll find anywhere in the dream of life. There's no life form that embodies it. There's nowhere our children go to and learn about it without us having to tell them how to think and feel about it. For example, the system tells us, because our parents have been got at, because they're representing the system, that version of reality, Ah, oh, that life form is a daffodil, and it's yellow. That color, we call it yellow. And it does this and this and this and that, and it is part of this and this and this and that. Oh, and that up there, that's Mars. And that over there, that's Venus. They're planets. And they're part of a solar system. And we're on Earth, and Earth is a planet, and it's also part of the solar system. And we're all going around that thing over there called the sun. And it's going around... The, uh, as part of a solar system around a galaxy of many galaxies going around a universe of many universes. And we're all tiny aspects of the universe at the effects of greater forces than us. And we're all on a journey heading from somewhere to somewhere. Now, all this information is intellectual property. None of this exists. It's the representation of other men and women's thoughts who taught us how to think and feel about what we're seeing, what we're sensing. So, for example, when we go to a life form, and we see this thing that we now call a daffodil, we block that life form in darkness because we can't sense the information coming from that life form because we're now representing the information they taught us to think and feel about that life form, which fills up our head in present sense. So we can't, we can't sense it's the life form's purpose. We can only represent the purpose that they told us what it is. So it's like taking a potato sack and putting it over the light bulb and shattered in darkness. And we shut off from it. Now, have you actually, if you think about this, they've done this with everything we touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see in the real sensory world. Has anyone seen the solar system with their own eyes, the way it's been described in the pictures and drawings? Do you know anyone that's actually seen it? No, I'm just taking their word for it that that's what it looks like, right? Exactly. Do you know that all the telescopes, everything they use, they use convex, curvex lenses to give the impression that the Earth is completely round and to give the idea that Earth is a planet. Did you know all this is fraud? Did you know all the debates we've had with astrophysicists, none of them can prove that Earth is a planet and that we're part of a solar system and that, we're actually, and that the Earth is turning going around the sun? Well, yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm relying on what I've been told by others, aren't I? Exactly. Yeah. Because you haven't had direct perception, direct experience. No, I, I, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the real world, we're supposed to be brought up by nature so we can have direct perception, direct experience. Mm. Because all that's already embodied in the dream of life that is nature. You see, they gave us another world of intellectual property to represent, to superimpose it over the real one. So we would fall from the real one because we're going to forget it and enter the dead one. Mm. Now, example. We'll go to an ant colony and say, listen, guys, ants, we're going to give you all a new program. You can all become individuals or individuals. You, each one of you can have your own purpose now. You can become Christian, Jew, Muslim. You can become a punk rocker, atheist. You can become a Democrat, Republican. You can become a lesbian. You can become homosexual. You can become whatever you want to be, and no one has the right to invalidate that. We're going to make it politically correct. And all the ants go, yippee, how exciting this all is. And all they go, off they go. Each one of them goes and fulfills their purposes in, in the role they want to play. In the meantime, in the real world, very few are taking care of the babies. Very few are taking care of the elderly. Very few are taking care of the ant world. And so the ant world begins to collapse and die, and all the individuals go with it. And that's what's happening to us. Because we've actually fallen from the real world. The real one and enter the dead one to represent it. Because if the dead one doesn't exist, it's made up. It's an illusion. It's a hologram. But the real one is not a hologram. It's mm. real. It has substance. You can touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see it. Mm. What we've got to do here is scrutinize every thought we are thinking. Did we create that thought from direct experience, direct perception, interacting with nature, which is who we really are, or are we representing the thoughts of other men and women who told us how to think and feel with what we are observing? Yeah. That's a penny drops. Yeah. You'll yeah. Realize, uh, yeah, right? yeah. Okay. You'll realize who Jordan Maxwell is. You'll realize who all these people are because that's what, what the scam is all about. Uh, what because do you mean? Is it, can, uh, 
Is, is he a disinformation guy? Because the reason why, because now the ants are all individuals. They need a system to get on with each other because no one's, no one's actually in the real world anymore. So they need a false system to glue them all together. Hmm. Right? So that's why they created the system. Yeah. Now this, this system's wearing things, so now they're going to create the new one called the one. It's going to be the oneness glue. It's going to be cosmic, galactic, Christianized. It's going to be all these kind of things because everybody thinks they're on a journey heading from somewhere to somewhere. And that in each one of them has their own truth. But because they can't create gifts of life, they can't co-create together without doing harm in the real world, in the dream of life, the real one. They need another system to provide order to this chaos. Hmm. So we fall to the system that they've created. So they've got to break us up into individuals then provide the system glue to glue us together. The scam of the new world order is not the present police state and chaos that we're experiencing with all the vaccinations and all that. Everything going wrong is not the new world order. The new world order is the, is the remedy to all this chaos, which is going to be the new system to suck everybody into. Hmm. And it's going to come from all the good guys out of the lodges of, of the new world, of, of the Freemasonic world, because they work both as good guys and bad guys. And the free man movement and the sovereignty movement and so much of the consciousness movement is led by these people. We will lead every revolution against us. If they can get you to think what they want you to think and get you to put your life, your thoughts into that, into, that, into that world, you'll set that world in motion. If they can get you to think you're an individual and get everyone else to become individuals, they'll provide you with the system glue to glue everyone together. Hmm. And that's what it's all about then. So that's the real scam. What information sources or, or what teachers do you recommend that are good sources None. of information? None. Okay. Nature. Okay. The only the only thing that I could even suggest that gets even close to anything is the Ringing Cedars books that came out of Russia. Hmm. The Ringing is ringing the bell, Cedars and the Cedar Tree. Um, you can find the link on the home page of the website. They sold about 30 million copies through word of mouth. You have to use your brain and be very discerning because there's a lot of fiction in it. But anyone who's using their brain can get a vast amount of information out of those books. But uh, you know, there are, look, there are a lot of good people everywhere, so I, I should correct what I said. Using our brains and scrutinizing, routing out all the nonsense, because nonsense are all the thoughts we are representing that other men and women told us how to think and feel, mm. taught us how to believe. Right? I'm asking all, everyone who listens to this, don't believe anything I'm saying either. Don't be in my image. Mm. Use your brain and scrutinize. Think it through. Look for the logic. You'll see wherever every... Every thought that takes us to harm doing, you know is a lie. If we have to harm nature in any way whatsoever and alter the original dream, because I haven't explained about the original dream and all that sort of stuff, but it's in the videos, but you know, if you wish me to discuss that, I can get into it for you. But the point is, we're not supposed to represent anything. We're all supposed to be brought up by nature. Who we really are is nature. And everything we see is nature. Even what we now call the solar system is nature. Is a it's our body. It's our living body. It's our living consciousness. It's the dream that we are. I mean, uh, I can explain this, that you know, every dream has a creator. And the dream of life, imagine the dream of life as a bubble. And all the information that makes up the dream of life are all the thoughts that living creator put into the dream of life, into that bubble. And to give it life, to give life to all that information, all that sensory information, Living Creator had to put its life into it, into that bubble, to give it life. So the presence, P R E S E N S E or C E, is present. P R E S E N T. It's always present. The truth is always present. It is sensory. It is not invisible. The presence of Living Creator is present to the trees. It's present to the air, to the wind, to the water, to the soil, to man. And every sound is our true tongue of nature. And that presence is the presence of living creator. When living creator, as this dream unfolded, put its life into the dream, it created man. Because it needed man to think and feel the information that makes up the dream of life. Because without keeping that in focus, it would fade away. So living creator created man. And in our true form, that is who we really are. We are the creator of this dream. And how we think is, how this dream, is where the dream goes. We're gifted with the power of life to set in motion every thought we are thinking. 
what we've got to do now is scrutinize all the information that we're setting into motion that is a lie, that's sending us, giving us a false world, or putting us into, into a state of illusion and fantasy and delusion, and, you know, sending us off on, on the wrong track, which forces into the, art, the artificial system made up by these people. So, Arthur, would you tell us a little bit more about your lifestyle in terms of, you know, living with nature? I saw some of your videos and your growing food. Tell us what you're doing with that. Well, we're coming from a compromise. You know, we're waking up to all this while we're still compromised. So bearing in mind that we're all really severely compromised. Um, we, we, we look at the remedy is to take full responsibility for everything we think, feel and do. Right? That's one thing that's key that impacts all our thinking. Another key to our thinking is that we see life as a gift and that everything we think, feel and do should be set free in the moment. Uh, put it into motion. Now, for example, we can't own, hold on to our last breath, drink or meal without dying. If we were to hold on, not let go today, we would physically kill who we are. Now, they taught us to believe so that we would own intellectual property, so that we would fall, we would die as well. Mm. Now, in the real world, we don't own anything. Nothing. Right. Because we're already the co-creator of this dream, and we have everything. By setting everything free, if, look, for example, if I live for you and your family, if I live for everyone around you, and I create a world for you and your family, that provides you with freedom, truth, peace, joy, abundance, and do no harm for all of life, without causing loss of uniqueness to your family, and without you or in your family have to become slaves and rulers. And if you did that for my family, and if all our families all together as part of the tribe did that for, we, for, that for each other, we would live in paradise. Hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the basic heart of what we're doing here. That's what we're about. Mm. Taking responsibility mm. for everything we think, feel, and do, and seeing everything as a life, and seeing everything uh, in life as a gift. Now that means we've got to also be conscious of all the ways we're doing harm. Now a lot of people, for example, argue that they need another system. Now we need another system, another monetary system. And I say to them, "Would you please show me on this map what part? Uh, Mark X, which mountain valleys are you going to destroy to construct the dead world to, to provide the administration center for this new system?" And who's going to come forward and take full responsibility for all that? I'd like to know who's going to come forward and do that. Secondly, I'd ask them, do you realize that every time you want a man-made system and you want money, you need to have slaves and rulers? You have to take men and women away from who they really are in their relationship with nature, put them on a conveyor belt through factory plan of work, brainwash them into the sameness mold so they can become the administrators of the intellectual property that is money in whatever form you choose to create it. Now, they've lost their uniqueness, and now they're now drones and robots, and you've got to put them onto a higher standing than you because you've got to give someone authority, some kind of responsibility over you. Who's going to come forward and take responsibility for that? Hmm. You see, so there's multi-layers of this issue. So when we're, when we're talking about how we're going to live, we have to walk away from all forms of the system so we don't have it anymore because we've already got it through, through life because every thought we're thinking, we gift it with life and we set that thought free as a gift for the benefit of others and we're all doing it. We don't need a man-made system anymore. We've already got it. We've got the best of everything. Oh, you're saying you don't live in, a, in the system anymore. Is that what you're saying? No, we're still compromised. We're still weaning our way out of that. Right. But we're working on waking people up. Hmm to get enough people together to start to do this. Yeah. Because otherwise, the choice we have, when we woke up in 2005, 2006, when we, when we started waking up to all this, the only choice we had was, or two choices we had, either go out in the middle of the wilderness, completely withdraw, and take the, the young kids with us, and Fiona was still pregnant then, and rough it. And we didn't know anything about raw food, living food then. We didn't know how to take care of our bodies. We didn't know. We didn't. We weren't traditional man on the land. So we didn't know enough about it, you know. So that would have been incredibly challenging and incredibly difficult on the children who were all addicted to the system, as we were. Mm. Or we start changing from within and start changing the world that we're in and start, start taking responsibility for all the destruction that we caused and start making things right, make whole everything that we've caused uh, into harm which is what we've been doing for the last six years, by reaching out, trying to wake people up through argument and debate and scrutiny and talking and us keep learning and until we can come up with a remedy 
which we've done with this article that we write called The Steps of Kingdom, which you can put up if you wish. It's called The Steps of Kingdom. We actually first wrote that in 2006, 2007 as an email discussion with an English fella who read the Ringing Cedars books. And um, we used our brain and came up with the basic ideas and then we left it alone and then we did a revision, a quick revision of it in 2008. And only recently we feel like we've got all the missing pieces of the puzzle together to be able to complete the picture on how we can cause a mass exodus out of the system to return to nature as co-creators of the living dream. And you'll see bits and pieces of other articles there, like about you know man on the land, and that's I think I sent it to you in an email too. Yeah, I did. I sent it to you in an email. Yeah, it's you on your website, that. isn't it, Arthur? Yeah. If you if you want to put those links up, mate, you can put them up and help your listeners have a look at these things and use their brain. And what we're wanting to do, mate, is to compile all this information to a two-hour so professional documentary, as you know, to enter the dead well with to help people wake up to what's going on because we're still learning how to do it. We've got a growing art house studio here. We're learning how to record music, contemporary music. We're, training, we're learning not to be amateur players, and which is very difficult because I hardly practice, and I write music. And, uh, and, with, and we've got Hannah and Andy staying with us, and they also write music, and they're involved. And you see them in the videos. They're, they're, they're committed to this dream, and there's other people who are supporting us doing it. So we're doing the best we can in small steps to do something, to, to be seen to be doing something, instead of keep giving our energy to the dead world, which doesn't provide us with any remedy. We've got to do something, you know. So we're doing the best we can, mate. I'm not saying that we that we're out of the system. I'm saying that I've removed all my contracts from the system, but I still rely on everybody else trapped in the system to provide me with shelter, to provide me with land to stand on, to provide me with gifts, so that I can keep doing this work, so I can actually talk to you on this phone call, that I can put the hours in, because that's all I live for, mate. I don't. In the last six years, I've been doing this seven days a week, 16 hours a day. Chronically, anyone who knows me well know that I'm a maniac when it comes to this stuff. You know, I I, I just totally besotted it because I've got nothing else to live for anymore. Mm. I don't want to live in the dead world, mm. and I realise if I want to live in the real world, I've got to wake people up and get people to return to the real world so I've got more friends <laughs> in the real world. Mm. Because at the moment we're all individuals, most of us. We're all fighting for the intellectual property of belief that puts us in a state of ownership where we're forced to be ruled by these people. And I'm trying to snap these people out of the spells. Because all forms of belief are spells, Ben. They're all spells. All of them. In 2005, we put it out that in the middle of the word belief is the word lie. You know, we started putting it out, the word construct. Con is the structure of the con. The condition, the conditioning of the con. You know, we started breaking up all the language codes. We're putting it out, and that started spreading. And, you know, it's become mainstream now in the, in, in the three-man movement. But you can thank and thank us and this man primarily for putting all this out there. And we didn't claim it. We don't own any of this. this is, there's, there's so much people are thinking today that's filtering through that's come from us, mm. from all this work. Yeah, I and certainly... Find it all the right. I get sent a lot of links uh, that link back to your website with various articles. There's quite an active community on there, isn't there, with the forum and stuff? No, no. Oh, really? No, we... No, it's very little. Um, no, we... I, I, it's basically been a one-man show. Oh, right, okay. And, and I have been able to handle... We're, we're getting up to 1,000 emails a day. Cool. We're getting all sorts of traffic, and I can't keep up with it, uh, to the point that I just don't have to reply anymore because we don't have other helpers at the moment for people who are committed. Um, we, no, correction, we, do get, we are getting some help, but everyone's compromised. They've, they've got a roof to put over there. They still need food on the table. They've still got children to feed some of them. Some of them, they've got contracts, and they're still tied to the system. If everybody suddenly just pulled down, They'll be in the midst of chaos, and we don't. We're not promoting that. We've got to use our brains to be clever because we have to learn how do we get back to the real world, and how do we do it, minimising any kind of harm to anyone, and without creating any more disturbance. Because we're already we're living in a terrible state of anarchy as it is. I mean, the world of anarchy is the system that that we're under already. I don't mean the the, the, the good side of the anarchy. I mean the chaos of real anarchy, because we're all individuals. We don't, none of us live for the dream. We all live for the images of the belief systems that we're under possession of. Because I was trying to explain to you before that when you believe, you've taken ownership of that intellectual property, as in little Mary taking ownership of Alice in Wonderland. She's now possessed by that intellectual property that rules her. Alice in Wonderland will dictate to her how she should think and feel, how she should perform. 
where she should go and what she should do. Now, you imagine all the religions today doing that to all the men and women under the spell of this possession because every belief is a demon. The demon is, is the life we've, we've given to it, we've set into motion, of that, that intellectual property. Mm. It's a demon. And we get cloaked by it. We get hooded by the priesthoods, the brotherhoods, the sisterhoods. We get cloaked by this nonsense. And we fall into a shroud of darkness. Arthur, because we're, we're, well, yeah. so, sorry to cut you off. So what if people are listening to this and thinking, you know, this guy's just paranoid. He's just paranoid about everything. What, what would you say? Well, that's their claim. I'm not making that claim. Hmm. I don't. I, that's their claim. I've not made that claim. I'm just saying that that I'm waking up to a world that is compromised, and we've got to be take, we've got to be diligent how we can take full responsibility for our lives, and learn how to uh, make clever steps to get out of the system of harm done. Because look, while we're using the internet, we're actually doing harm. While we're using electronics, we're actually doing harm. We're destroying living sensory life forms. No, no, no creature, no life form ever gave its permission to be killed and eaten or be destroyed. None of them. We've, look, a man under the possession of intellectual property that we call an engineer will not connect with the true purpose of a forest and the life forms that make up that forest. He, she will represent the intellectual property of the engineer and only see what he, the purpose of his belief. So he can easily go in and create a highway right through that forest and, and destroy a section because of the world that he's living in. No different to little Mary representing Alice in Wonderland, changing the family home into the props and settings of her Wonderland world, you know, so she can enter on stage in character. So the man who's under the possession of the intellectual property, that is the engineer or the scientist or whatever, is the same. So when you talk about someone who's paranoid, they are the ones who are paranoid because they are lost in a world of harm, supporting harm, and they won't take responsibility because they're all bound on limited liability. And again, we explain all this in, in the videos. Mm. What we're trying to do is to inspire people to stop the harm in all forms and withdraw from harm doing. Now, if that makes someone paranoid, then God bless all of us, mate. <laughs> How are we ever going to get out of this mess? So, so what, sh be... what would be your ideal? Uh, how do you envisage? You know, how do you want the world to be? How would you like it to end up eventually? How, how what lifestyle how are people are going to live? Well, the progress, the progress of civilization is the destruction. It's actually we're committing spiritual suicide to who we are. The idea of making rocket ships and puncturing through the living body of who we are is insanity. But do you think we shouldn't the have idea... any technology? No, because our body can do everything. So, oh, right. So you, you advocate a real, a, a real back to basics kind of lifestyle. Is that what you well, mean? Well, you got to remember. You got to remember how much of what you're thinking now is the world they taught you. Hmm. They shaped. They shaped. They told you about the dark ages. They told you about those squiggly things that came out of water that evolved into monkeys, that evolved into man, and that turned into this, and we came out of the dark ages and all that. You can remember they wrote everything. These people. Were you present to that? Were you present to the Dark Ages? Were no. you present to the Ice Age? No. Were you present to everything they're talking about? Do you know anyone else who was present there? You won't find anybody. It's all bullshit. Well, well, it's all rubbish. Well, how was it? Uh, I mean, I don't... I don't well, okay. you've got to go to nature. You've got to go to nature to get the, to get the truth. Look, uh, another way to look at this, and again, don't believe what I'm saying. Use your brain, work it out. Earth, Earth is not a planet. Right? We're not part of a solar system. That is clear. It is incontrovertible. It's a fact. We have to look at the, the dream of life as a living body and that everything that we see, touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see is that living body that we are. That's the first thing to realize. Then you've got to look at the purpose of everything. We've got to connect with everything and, and, and access the information. Download, if you wish, the information from every life form that you're observing so that you can build up a profile of the true purpose of the dream of life that tells us who we really are, what we are really part of it, and, and our true purpose for this dream. Instead of representing the thoughts of other men and women, because they gave us such a background of information that we think that we've come from a dark world and that the progress of civilization with all the technology is advancement. In fact, it's the opposite. We're capitulating into, a dark, into, into an abyss of darkness. We're committing spiritual suicide because all of it represents the decay of the real world. We have to destroy the real one to create the dead one. 
and no one's taking any responsibility for this. It's gone all out of control now. Our brain has the ability to telepathically communicate with each other. We don't need to use these telephones, but we've forgotten how to do it because we've fallen into the fiction, into representing the prosthetics that now we call telephone and mobile phone and internet. Our brain has the capacity to shift its form. But we've forgotten how to even communicate with ourselves. We communicate with everything that makes up who we are. Um, in the real world, our ancestors were much taller than us long ago. Um, without going too far into it, because the evidence is there. It's been uncovered by archaeologists in the system who are breaking out. There's some wonderful, wonderful people everywhere breaking out. And you can get the pieces of the puzzle that's by scrutinizing the information, taking what makes sense and leaving behind all the nonsense. But as you build up the profile of sense, you can see that Earth was enveloped by a water canopy. That water was our ancestors. Every time we breathe out, we create water. Are you aware of that? Yeah. We're creating water. Why do you think there's so much water today? I don't know. Because we're creating it. Did you know that every time we breathe out... What we are thinking, we set into motion those thoughts, and that information is embodied in the water. It's mm. coated in the water. Mm. Right? Now, living, creating, creating the dream, the first thing that was created, and any understanding of this or comprehension of this was water. And water is in everything. Mm. In everything. Mm. And in water, ah. in terms of science, you know. You know. But and carbon um, embodies the intention of our thinking. Mm. So, now, that's why our children, uh, in the old days, in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the real world, our children can go and visit our ancestors, which is what we would have called sacred sites. Now, the whole of the dream of life is sacred. Everything is sacred. There's no one place better than another, but basically tribes are tribes of man living on the land. Those bodies where the consciousness uh, of the waters had changed what we now call death, you know, in those we don't actually die. And when people remember who we really are, we actually don't die. But they can go and contemplate on everything their ancestors were thinking, including their own mother and father, by the rocks and the, and the flowers and the plants and all the life forms in that space uh, where that body had changed and where all the waters went into the soil of their bodies, where all the water went into the plants and into the air. Now, they can go and commune with the consciousness of their ancestors because that information is sensory. They still live. Now, why do you think they're using chemtrails and using all the microwaves and why do you think they're puncturing all the atmosphere still now, what we call the atmosphere, with all the airplanes and rocket ships and all that stuff? To keep the water. Because see, what happened to our ancestors long ago, they busted the water canopy. They burst it and it collapsed. And it came down from what we call the ionosphere, atmosphere, stratosphere which are all constructs, they're all made up. And it smashed everything on Earth, devastated. And it filled all the lowlands, which is now called the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, etc. And underneath that water are the remains of the first attempt of the New World Order, of the dead world, which they're trying to glorify into all the mysteries and wonders of all these buildings they're uncovering. But it's actually the remains of the dead world. And you can learn about this. You can get your head around this, and you realise just you know just how how deceptive, how incredible this nonsense is, how they've done this. But the point I'm getting at: before we burst the water canopy, the oxygen in the air was so pressurised, and the pollen in the air was so rich that every breath was life. We were. I won't say that we were breath areas, but I'd say that our ancestors, ancestors would have been a minimum of 14 foot tall, up to 30 something feet tall. And that um, all the big animals were our mates. We know clearly that Tyrannosaurus rex didn't exist, that they, they invented them using plaster on Paris, which is the same stuff they used to, uh, to mend broken bones, and they put you in plaster. They made them up out of different animals. We know that they've made up a, a huge lie about a history, these people, and that science was used as a religion to brainwash us into a version of reality so that we could be deceived. But all this Anunnaki stuff that any of your listeners know about is all rubbish. All this stuff about aliens coming from other worlds is all man-made. It's all garbage. Everything is represented by us. In fact, everything that we are thinking and feeling is man-made because we are the living creator in this dream. The buck stops with us. 
we have the power to create everything. Any image we are thinking is created by man. And we can give that image life and have it bounce back at us. And we're so gifted, we actually can create the reptilians if we want to, as demons. We can actually create all kinds of things. But we're so forgotten who we are that we're no longer conscious of the effects of what we're setting into motion, which is all the thoughts, all the images that we're thinking. Hmm. We're so disconnected from who we really are. Yeah. Right. So I'm, what I'm pointing out to you, all the stuff about the Anunnaki and all these bodies they're finding, because back in the early 70s, I was involved in the Theosophical Society as a, as a young 14, 15-year-old kid. And I used to read all these books, which you can't find anymore. I had collections of these books in crates. A lot of them got stolen. And I, I knew then, uh, I didn't comprehend the story then, but I knew then that our ancestors were very, very tall because they were finding bodies all across Earth, everywhere. Even on, this, on your lands, our lands, everywhere. 14 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot. And the Freemasons were whitewashed and white ant and discredited everything by creating um, artificial ones and then use it to discredit the real ones, to white ant it. But you'll find that um, Earth, um, as it, in its true form, um, our bodies, our bodies, our ancestors' bodies were much, much bigger. We're shrunk now. We're shrinking. We're shrinking and shrinking because we're forgetting who we are. We're, 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 we're withdrawing from sense. We're falling into nonsense. Nonsense as in the food that we're eating. Nonsense as in the water that we are drinking. Nonsense as in the fairy tales that we're thinking. As, that is the information they taught us through lang their alphabet languages. And all the constructs, all the payloads that were provided um, through those alphabet languages so that we, they could form a version of reality in our brain. So we would set that into motion. Get us all to set it into motion so we all fall into it. So what I'm saying is that we have the gift to do everything with our body and we don't need the prosthetics of the system that are fictions to represent. We don't need walking sticks, walking frames. We don't need to be old. We don't need to um, to, to have cars. And we can do this. Our, our bodies could run incredible speed. We could, The things we could do with our body is unlimited. But the system, through its technology, its, its potential is, is, is so narrow that if you just put your thumb and forefinger together and just left a gap, that's the potential we've got. That's as far as we can go. But with using consciousness, using our true body, using sense, we're unlimited in our capacity. But that means we have to start re remembering who we really are, mate. We have to start thinking sense and return to the sensory world so we can start expanding consciousness again, start expanding our water, expanding who we are, and stop falling into the dead one and, 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 and keep keeping that one in motion. Hmm. Hence, raw food, living food. It's important to learn about living food. Stop eating food that's been cooked and processed. Stop eating water that is not on your lands. I mean, stop drinking water. Stop heating it and changing because all the information of nature that is the living dream is sensory information. When we alter it, heat it and process it, we distort it and it becomes nonsense. It's no longer part of the living dream. And then you eat it and drink it and smell it, and walk it, and talk it, and believe it. We actually become that because we've set that into motion. So we age, and we wrinkle, and we shrink, and we get sick, and we get diseased. And we do all kinds of things to our bodies because we actually created it, because we're the ones responsible for everything. Hmm. We've got to stop passing the buck to all these lies these people give us that the, there's some intervention out there, some other force out there that's doing it. It's all man-made. Um, I just to end this moment, um, this little party. It needs the dream of life needs us, man, to exist here and now to think and feel the, that information. For example, all information that represents the past and the future needs us to exist here and now to think and feel that information. If we don't exist here and now to think and feel that information, no thoughts of the past or the future can be thought or felt. Because in our true form, the living creator of this dream. Yeah. Right? And we, if we don't remember who we are, then we forget who we are. Then we will fall away from that. And then we can start destroying everything of what we're really part of because we've got no connection to it anymore. We're no longer conscience, conscious. We're no longer sense. We're now fallen.
We're now a dead corpse, a dead man in the dead world, ruled by the dead, land, the, the dead statutes in the dead world. You know, all that's rubbish. So what I'm trying to say to you, the sun shines, just, to, I'll just hang in there, hmm. the sun shines only here and now. We breathe here and now. All thoughts man thinks and feels only occurs here and now, moment by moment. Everything occurs here and now. That's where our power is, here and now, in the moment. We have to learn to start taking full responsibility in the moment. Instead of falling into the constructs of the fairy tales, mm. where we're leaving it for somebody else. In this case, astrology, numerology, um, self-fulfilling prophecies, uh, main calendar, time, space, all these things. These are all science-based. This is all nonsense. We are creating it, mate. If, if, if you can imagine this, if your ancestors were introduced to the construct that is the Bible and they were thinking and feeling in the moment that information and they passed on that belief to their children for them to put that into motion and they passed it on to their children to put that into motion and if the story it has a time code in it and they provided you with a time code as in a calendar for that story to, to, to be performed then we will create, we are the descendants of those children who will create the outcome of that time code in that story. Hmm. What, like yeah, playing out a story kind of thing? Exactly. Hmm. It's self-fulfilling. We are creating everything. Hmm. We are not at the effect of astrology, occult, esoteric. All this is garbage. It's all nonsense. It doesn't exist. It's all man-made. We're just representing the thoughts of other men and women who told us how to think and feel. Hmm. All yeah. of it including all forms of channeling, all, all, the, the, all the goddess stuff that you're hearing, all the new age stuff running around, so much of the stuff peddling across the internet now um, from global warming. <laughs> I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on, and we are creating it all, and we're all at the effect of it. When we wake up to realize we are the ones responsible, and we are creating everything because we're thinking through that information in the moment and setting that into motion, giving life to it. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Of course, it's going to bounce back in the image of our projection. Mm. Our brain's like a film projector. The, the images that scan across the lens are the thoughts we are thinking in the moment. If they can provide you with the reel of film and get you to scan that, that reel of film, meaning the stories they, they, they pitch you to, to, to get you to represent, right? which is why they brainwash us in their, in their conveyable through their factory planet, planet Earth education system, including university, etc., well, we'll create that. So we project those images into the cinema of life and it will bounce back from nature in the cinema of life in the image of our, of our projection. We are creating everything because we're projecting it. Hmm. All we've got to do is to change our thinking. So when you ask the question, what are we doing about how we're going to live and all that, we're trying to help other people to stop giving life to nonsense. And start giving life to sense. Return to the sensory world. Hmm. And start creating that again, where we stop doing harm, where we all start living under full liability, where no man is a master of another man, where all men are equal. And we're all fully accountable for all our actions. And we start co creating the dream of life that we are again. Because all the creatures of nature are our mates, but we've fallen from them, we've, we've actually abandoned them. We've abandoned everything, man. We, we are the hostile aliens on the, on the dream. We're the, we're the invaders. We're not invaded from somewhere else. We've, we've become the invaders of the nonsense we're representing and projecting in this dream. The mm. sensory world. Yeah. And doing harm. So is that psychosis to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So, or is it just, it's just about rationalising, like working your brains and trying to get make sense of all this? This is this is so many ideas in one go. So a, a lot of this stuff is uh, on your website in various different articles, is it? It is, but you could the on the YouTube channel, the Arthur Love for Life YouTube channel. I've been putting up videos and we'll keep putting some up too. And that is a compilation of the best we possibly can as amateurs to put together the information of all these insights. And when we feel confident enough that we think we can compile it into a simple way, that we can bring it out as a two-hour documentary, 
um, your listeners, those who are empathetic about this, if anyone wants to contribute to this, who wants to help work with music and contemporary music and working with art and all that, you know, you're more welcome to contact us because life is a team effort. This is, this, freedom, freedom is a team effort, effort. Truth is a team effort. You know, everything about the real world is a team effort. If we work together as a team again, we can get out of this together. You know, you see, you know, the, the, the creatures live for the forest, and the forest takes care of all the creatures, and all together they maintain the perfection of life. If men, women, and ch- men, women, and children take care of the tribe, and the tribe takes care of everyone, and all together they maintain the perfection of the dream of life. It's a team effort. There are no leaders. Mm. Anyone, who call, anyone who sets themselves up as a leader is a fraud. If there is such a thing as good leaders, then they are the ones who inspire others to take responsibility for life and share the workload around as team players. Mm. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. You see, so you know, the body of the work is 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 a, is, is, is to inspire other people not to believe anything that we're saying, but who feel through sense that they want to start taking responsibility of how they think, feel, and do, and be accountable to be doing something now. So instead of going to Wall Street and with half a million of us rallying, we withdraw from the system and create the real one. Ignore the dead one. Return to the real one. Stop going to these people and asking them to fix it. Stop ah! passing the buck and, and while you're still ha- taking the hand, handouts, you know, living off their money, living off their services and all this stuff, which is all destroyed nature, you know, destroyed life. The, the videos will explain this very clearly. Mm. We've got to go back to the real world. So uh, that's what we're about, Ben. You know, let's work together, mate. If you're, if you're up for this, if this is what you really live for, we don't need a man-made system. We've just got to start restoring who we really are so that our, our who we really are can expand. And in expanding, we become more powerful with love and, and, and sensitivity. And we can start to communicate using our brains again. We won't need to do internet calls, mate. We can have this conversation straight through the water. <laughs> yeah. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm very serious. Mm. This is, this is, I'm talking truth here, I'm talking sense. We won't need to use television and all this rubbish anymore. We can get rid of all this garbage, which is just causing so much harm to all of us. We don't need to do all this. Mm. Now, um, when we go back to raw food, living food, and we stop altering nature, when we stop altering that information, we actually start to restore the DNA in its original form. Yeah. Through our intention, by setting that into motion. And the game's over then. So we have to learn to become living raw food eaters again. So, you know, I, I was wrong in saying there's nothing out there. It's all rubbish. I'm wrong in saying that. What I should have said, you have to look for the jewels amongst all the garbage. Mm. Mm. You know, separate the, 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 the seed, the, the wheat from the chaff, you know, what was said long ago. Mm. We've got to, you've got to use our brain and scrutinize and rat out all forms of nonsense, which is all intellectual property that's got no basis in the real world. It's not sensory. And capture all the sensory information to help recreate the image of what is the dream of life and who we are and what we are part of without, some, without us like in this case, I don't want you believing what I'm saying to you. I don't want you to be in my image. And I don't want, and I don't want you influencing me so I'm in your image. Because it was, it was wrong to force any other man, woman, child to be in the image of another man, woman, and child. Because we've lost our uniqueness when we do that. Hmm. We're supposed to be brought up by nature. Yeah. Nature's our teacher because nature is, is, is where all the information of our ancestors is stored in the water. And, you know, when you're an artist and you, and you have a purpose and you've got to paint, mm. and you paint, mm. right? Well, we are the artists of the dream of life. We're the ants that are of, that are of the ant colony co-creating this dream. Our purpose is to co-create this living dream and expand it. Mm. But we've been hijacked to co-create a dead one, a dead world, and superimpose it over the real one, which means we have to fall away from the real one and start doing harm and destroying it at the cost of completely destroying it so that we will commit spiritual suicide because if we all forget who we are and what we're part of, it's all over. Hmm. Yeah. I stress the point. We're not heading anywhere, mate. We're not on a journey going from anywhere to anywhere. Anyone tells you that they're representing the thoughts of another man or woman. Yeah. Well, 
if you're in a satellite and, and I'm on the ground, I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, you're, I can see you moving across the sky, but you won't see me moving. And everything we see is moving across the sky with our eyes. Our eyes are not lying to us. But you won't see the earth turning or that the earth is going around the sun or that we're part of the solar system in, in that way. Hmm. But what you do see, what we do sense, is the living body. Everything we're seeing is real. We need to contemplate and access the information of what we now call Mars and Venus and all the other things, all the celestial body, and let them tell us what they are, what their purpose is. And that gives us a true profile of what we really are part of, mate. Mm. Yeah. Arthur, we've been going quite a while now, and um, I don't want to go on too much longer because when okay. the, you know, for people, you know, kind of hour and a half is about as... Uh, you know, it's long well, enough for people to swallow in one go kind of thing, if you know what I mean. I'm happy to touch on, if you want to, if you're ever interested in touching on a particular theme and we zoom in on that and just go into that area, I'd be quite happy to do that if you wish to do that down the line. Sure, we could do that in the if future. Any... In the in the meantime, yeah. people can come and check out your website and check out your YouTube channel and, you know, look at all these yeah, things yeah. you've been talking about. And, and, uh, yes. and then, we, yeah, we can see where it goes from there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. I appreciate you taking the time to to go over that with us and give us an introduction into your kind of outlook and stuff. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Yeah, it's certainly very interesting, and it, you know, it's nice to hear different things from different people, and it's it's nice yeah. to get an exposure to to what you've been doing down there, type of thing. So, um, yeah, it's it's very fascinating for us. Yeah. And I apologise that I've skirmished on the surface and jumped from one to the next and next to the next and probably haven't been able to complete. There probably will be things that I've said and people will be scratching their going, well, I didn't finish, I didn't explain the rest of it. So yeah. any of those things, I'm sorry, I apologise for that. And, and it's in the answers you'll find are in those videos and in the articles mm. if you're prepared to put, you know, some, you know, in your spare time over the next couple of months or uh, weeks, put your head in and scrutinise, you'll get all your answers you're looking for. At least you'll know where we're at, you know, what, how we're seeing it, whether you believe it and all that stuff is another matter, but, you know, which we don't want you to do. But, but we, are, we are serious about remedy, Ben. That, that, that in the end, after everything else is said and done, the remedy that provides freedom, truth, peace, joy, abundance, and do no harm for all of life, without causing loss of uniqueness to anyone or anything, and without the need for slaves and rulers, is what we're up for. Mm. Now, we created that, not as, not as exclusivity or privilege. We don't claim it. It's, I think anyone who wakes up comes to the same thing. We all come to it. And we know what that remedy is, and the powers that be do not want to promote it. They don't want to talk about it. They shun you, and they completely ignore you. And it's very interesting that anyone who's sincere and true about true remedy and true love gets completely ignored by the system, completely and yet they promote all their charity and all their ben the, the, the beneficial things, the, benef you know, the, you know, the benefits that they seem to promote. They send their billion-dollar support to other countries because they've had a devastation over there. But when it comes to simple things like this that can change the way we're living with each other and bring order, bring true peace into the world, they shun it. So it just tells you how powerful the system is and the, the people behind it. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're up for, mate. That in the end, you, you can know everything I've said and just focus on the remedy, because it is the remedy, the steps of kingdom, that is what matters, and mm. what we're going to do about getting out of this mess. Mm. That's what's important. Yeah, sure. Well, we'll get there eventually, eh? Yeah. Hopefully. Thanks, Mac. Thank, <laughs> thanks for allowing me to, yeah, again. And, um, yeah, I, I didn't actually hear, I have to go and spend some time on you and get to learn about you, mate. I don't know much about you. I saw you appearing ah. um, three four years ago, uh, through emails and, and uh, little things here and there across the internet on, on, on forums, I think. I remember your name. And then I saw the, the, the Ben Lowry rising prominence in the system of the free man movement. And I have to apologize. I have not looked at your stuff. I haven't actually gone in and listened to what you've been doing. But I've been aware of you, mate. Mm. I've been aware of, you know, and uh, good on you for what you're doing and allowing a platform for someone like me to be able to go and go blah, blah, blah and reach an audience that where maybe they don't know anything about what we're doing and give them another slant on things. So, you know, bless you, mate. Bless yeah. you what you're doing, what you're contributing. Sure. Thank you, Arthur. Yeah. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave you for now and we thank you again okay. for your time and uh, we'll uh, we'll see where it all goes, eh? Okay. And when you put this up, I'll grab it and I'll whack it up too and put it into our networks and, and circulate it for you as well, mate. Sure. And I'll give you 
we're going to help give as much exposure for you what you're doing as well. Brilliant. Yeah, I'll send you the link as soon as it's online. All right. All the best to you, man. All right. You too, Arthur. Take care. Have a nice Bye-bye, nice everybody. All the best to everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah. Truth, no more waiting for savior. 